Hi guys, Keith from Terry X here. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to rejoin your chain using our chain breaker and a hollow ended rivet link. The same principle can apply to a spring link with a press where you have to press the plate on before you can put the spring on. Um, if you have one of our chain breakers and you've been doing this uh, by using the pin with an uh, adaption now uh, which doesn't use the pin to flare the link, so I recommend you watch this video and may want to upgrade to the ball bearing part that we now supply with the chain breaker. Um, thanks for watching, I'll uh, get into it. Right, so we've got our chain breaker. Um, we don't need to use this bit for now, so it's going to take him out. What we do need to use is this bit here. So this is a grub screw with a ball, bear, ball bearing in the end. We need to use this even if we're just pressing on a plate for a spring link or to, to start a river link. When it needs to be just snugged up to the back of the chain pin. Otherwise, when you're pressing on the front here, there's a good chance it will start pressing the pin out the back of your link. So I've got my two bits of chain here. I've got this, <coughs> was in there anyway, a link. It's an RK520 XS01. That's a hollow ended solid link. So, now I will put the O rings on. It does make it a little bit slower on the video, perhaps, but. Holding together, take our chain breaker and just pinch one side slightly to hold it there. Then we take the grub screw there and you can just reach it and just touch the back of the pin. Doesn't need to be done tight at this point. <coughs> I'm going to take one of my tie levers because. That's the best tool to use, but obviously you can use a spanner. But we do need another spanner for this because it is another. It is a 17. And really, we just do alternate between both sides of the pin of the link and push the plate on. You know that you know it's right on when you it comes to a a stop on the roller. Don't go too far. So there we have pressed on. So if that was a spring link, now you just put your clip on there and you'd be good to go. But we're going to flare these ends now. Got a caliper here, Vernia. I'm just going to show you because yeah, someone's been messing with my caliper. So the actual size is about. Can you see about five point? 5.18 which is a little bit slightly smaller than the pin size itself pin sizes range around about 5.23 or 4 so we need to get that bigger than the, that size now in the past what people have been doing is clamping the with the hole towards the pin end Clamping it up and then just trying to force the pin into the hole to to flare out the link. Uh, it's not particularly quick, and it takes a, puts a lot of pressure on the pin. And a lot of people have, you know, 
either broken the pin or run the risk of breaking the pin. So what we've done is we've devised this little ball bearing part. So what we need to do is turn the chain around the other way. Well, turn the chain breaker around the other way. So we've got the holes there and it's going to go in the this way. So we need excuse me. We need to make sure that this little ball bearing is actually holding the chain away from the back of the chain breaker. We don't want to, so we need a gap there. So when we clamp that up and the ball, you can see that there's maybe a millimetre or so at the back. And really what we do is we hold the chain breaker again, we snug up the pin and we go as if we're going to be pushing a pin out. Now go gently with this because the idea is that you're just you're pushing the ball bearing into the hole. So you don't really want to go too mad. You'll feel you pretty much feel when you're not going to be able to go any further and if you just keep on going it's something's going to have to break but we can have a couple of attempts so we'll just we'll have a look and see what that's done yeah looks like a bit of a flare but i'll check it probably have to do some more yeah five point yeah, we need to go more. Just a little bit at a time. You can feel the give, whether it's letting it move slightly. Oh, that's actually going to be crooked, but. Yeah, so now you're starting to see Pretty good flare. That's five five point four eight there. I would leave it at that. I'd be happy with that. You can go a little bit more. The um, the actual stake pins themselves on the widest part around five point six seven five point seven, and we've got. 5.44 still still a bit you could still go a bit but you, if you go too far you run the risk of putting a crack in there and once it cracks obviously it's no good so I, personally I'd be happy with that but it really is a question of whether you want to take it a little bit further or not and uh, I'm just going to do the one because the other one's exactly the same but as you can see there's not a lot of pressure on that pin anymore uh, compared to compared to the old way of doing it. What I would suggest is instead of just snugging that up by hand like I did, uh, I would actually I'd use a spanner just to get that tighter. Then that way there's no chance of the chain moving like it did in a little bit in there. But it worked, and that's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Actually, I have decided to do the other one and uh, put it on video as well. So, yeah. Same as the other side. I actually think I might 
just not have that poking out quite as far so that the chain goes there's still a gap there and this time I'm going to put some pressure onto the clamp and then once again screw it in See the gap getting smaller where it's pushing the bearing up into the hole. It does like to move a little bit in there. But again, we've got a Pretty decent flare straight away. Five point five six and five sorry, I'll show you. Five point five six straight away and the other the other one we did five point four six. So just a question of watching what's going on and just being a bit gentle and you get a good result. Thanks.